Since June of 2015, the people uh, have begun a program called Begin Again. In that program, we've looked to vacate and dismiss summons warrants that were decades old. Um, and in continuing in that mission, we identified a number of cases that were in excess of 10 years, some 15 to 20 years old. Um, I've asked the Office of Court Administration to put a list of those cases together. Uh, they range in the electronic calendar today's case number one, 143,532. At this point, the processing of so many low-level summons warrants is an undue hardship on the district attorney's office and is a waste of resources as many of these cases uh, happen decades ago for low-level offenses like riding a bike on the sidewalk and uh, being in the park after dusk. It's also true for the court system that the processing of these cases takes up valuable court resources and time and prevents the court from appropriately handling other cases and having people wait at arrangements while these cases are being processed. Many of these cases are over two decades old, and while there may be sufficient evidence to sustain the charges, in the interest of justice, uh, we believe that the cases should be dismissed and the warrant should be vacated. Therefore, not on the merits, but in the interest of justice, I ask this board, and I move so on behalf of the people of Brooklyn, to vacate all the warrants and to dismiss the underlying summons warrants. And the tickets that came down to that. So, Judge, Set reasons, and in the interest of justice, I ask this court to dismiss these cases. For the Legal Aid Society, the Legal Aid Society is joining the people's application. The Legal Aid Society is very pleased to support the district attorney's application. And as the Brooklyn Defender Services, do they join the people's application? The Brooklyn Defender Services is very pleased to join the people's application. Thank you. And as to the ATV panel, the ATV panel chooses to join the people's application. We join in its entirety. Thank you. So, the court will grant the motion to vacate the interim time of each case. The court will grant the motion to dismiss each case for the purpose of justice. Each matter will, matter will be sealed pursuant to CPL section 160.50. However, because of the unprecedented nature of this undertaking involving simultaneous action in over 640,000 cases citywide, the court has had to work outside of its normal course of business to communicate the court record to the New York City Police Department, and it will take significantly longer than normal to enter this information into the courts and NYPD's database. Therefore, while I'm granting the motion to vacate, dismiss, and seal each case, I will stay execution of these orders for 90 days to provide adequate time for the court and NYPD to properly reflect this order in their records. Until that time, the court has worked with NYPD to do the following. NYPD will not actively seek to execute warrants on the cases of this calendar. And the court clerks will check a database before calendaring any summons warrant more than 10 years old. So that is the decision of this court. And Officer Wilson? Having no further business, of course, they have adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. I want to say thank you to uh, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito um, for joining me today. Also to our public advocate, Tish James, to all the clergy that are here and all the other community stakeholders who joined us today. We just left the courtroom after asking Judge Ariaga to dismiss over 143,000 summons warrants. Many of these cases uh, stem at 10, 15, 20 years old, and they stem from low level summons activity. For example, someone riding a bike on a sidewalk, being in the park after dusk. And people receive these tickets um, for various reasons. Some people couldn't afford work, uh, afford to miss work, to get to court, to pay the ticket. Some people simply 
couldn't afford to pay this, the fine. Some people had child care issues. And there are many, many other reasons why people did not responsibly handle these summonses. However, we know that none of those people were ever told that failure to pay those fines would lead to an arrest warrant. And we also know that the court system at that time did not provide any mechanism to have the case recalled or offer a second chance to come down to court and take care of those summonses. And many, many people, um, and New York City has well over one million summons warrants, uh, did not even know that there was a, a warrant for their arrest. And so we needed to do something about that, and the leadership here began speaking about how we could vacate and clear some of these summons warrants. I believe that someone who owes a $25 fine should not be um, arrested and brought down to central booking and spend 20, 24 hours in a cell next to a hardened criminal. That's not fair and that's not justice. And so today's action um, removes the burden of possible arrest from tens and tens of thousands of people in Brooklyn. And throughout the city, even more warrants are being vacated. Another truth about these summons warrants is that although some of them may be able to be pursued 10 and 15 years later, the overwhelming majority of these cases can no longer be prosecuted in the courtroom. We cannot prove today that the person who received this summons 10 and 15 years ago uh, was guilty of those fines. So while we're not dismissing the cases on the merit, we're dismissing them in the interest of justice, it's clear that the resources um, that would be required to prove these cases is an undue hardship, not only for the district attorney's office and the court system, but even for the police department. We need our police officers to be on patrol and not to be pulled off patrol because they came in contact with someone who had a minor summons warrant from 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, the time that it takes to arrest them, process the paperwork and bring them down to central Brooklyn, I believe, uh, keeps us less safe because those officers have been taken off the street. They're a burden to our system. As I've already said, we have well over a million of these summons warrants in the city of New York, um, and 25 percent of those were in Brooklyn. But not only are they a burden to the system, they're a burden to the individual lives of the people who have them. We understand that people who have these summons warrants are impacted in their daily lives in small ways that really devastate them from moving forward. It impacts them in housing, when they're applying for housing. When they're applying for public benefits, it impacts them. For many people, when they're applying for employment, background checks will reveal warrants from 10 and 15 years ago. So it's a real burden on people. And if they come across law enforcement um, at a traffic stop, when they were reporting a crime, the police have no choice but to arrest them because they have this warrant. Today, by removing these warrants, we remove that burden off the system, but we also remove the burden from people. And so many of these folks are surprised when they're arrested. They did not know they had a warrant for their arrest. So today, I am proud to have asked the judge to dismiss 143,532 warrants in the county of Brooklyn, county of Kings, we are going to focus our resources on the type of crime that keeps the people of Brooklyn safe, violent criminal activity. It encourages the police department and frees them up to do the same. And for our court system, it means that people don't have to wait at arraignments as the court is um, handling these cases. So I am happy to have done it. I want to thank my partners in this. And it started with our clergy um, two years ago, my mentor, Ken Thompson began the Begin Again program because he believed that these summons warrants were unfair. And he asked the clergy to open up the houses of worship so that the people of Brooklyn who were too afraid to come in and settle these cases because they were afraid that they would be automatically arrested. Um, and we created these makeshift courtrooms in our, in our houses of worship and thousands of people came in to clear up these warrants. What we learned from that was that the people of Brooklyn believed that this was necessary. And we also learned an important lesson, that these warrants and clearing these warrants and dismissing these summonses actually keep us safe. Uh, we, there is no public safety 
fear that dismissing these warrants and somehow would make us less safe. In fact, they make us safer. And I want to thank the clergy for promoting this and for helping us um, start the Begin Again. It's a direct line from Begin Again into what we started here today and what we've done. We also uh, need to thank, and I want to personally thank the other DAs, DA Clark, DA Vance, and DA Brown for doing the same in their counties. Together, um, today, we've dismissed over 640,000 summons warrants. This ongoing uh, mission to make our criminal justice system fairer and to put our precious resources into fighting the type of crime that will keep the people of our city safe is an important step forward. And so I want to thank uh, my speaker, who was very instrumental in getting this moving. Just about a year ago, her and I sat down to discuss how we could do this. I want to thank the public advocate, because from the very beginning, she was there with Ken Thompson and with me as we advocated on behalf of the people of Brooklyn with Begin Again programs and making sure that our criminal justice system could be fairer. And a special thanks goes out to the Office of Court Administration, who was a partner in this, the New York City Police Department, who were partners, and of course, the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, who helped coordinate this event as well. Together, we've shown that we can work together and do this. And we could not do this without our public defenders. So I want to thank Legal Aid, who was with us in all our Begin Again events, um, the Brooklyn Defender Services, who are also partners in uh, not only in clearing warrants, but in doing the work in the courtrooms, and our private defense bar, 18B attorneys, the Kings County Criminal Bar Association, for all the work they've done to support us as we continue to move the ball forward and create a better criminal justice system. And finally, this is an important step forward in the relationship between law enforcement and community. These low-level summons warrants were a real divide between the community and our law enforcement partners. And so today, we take a step in healing sort of the friction that has existed between our communities and our law enforcement officials. Thank you all for coming. We're going to hear from our speaker next. Thank you. Um, it's, a, it's a very emotional day, I have to say. And being in that, in that courtroom and, and witnessing that action of 143,532 summons or warrants being dismissed, those are lives we're talking about also um, that are impacted. This is not just a number, and uh, there's a person behind that warrant. And now that person uh, is able to kind of maybe unknowingly had that warrant, but individuals' lives are impacted, and 640,000 citywide. Um, Eric, thank you so much, because you have been an incredible advocate on this and supportive when we spoke about this and figuring out how we could take what you were doing here in Brooklyn to a citywide perspective, right, and, and impacting the lives into our public advocate and to, uh, to James and to all the clergy and the, our, our advocates here as well and the lawyers. Um, I'm really honored to join Acting Brooklyn District Attorney Gonzalez and public advocate James and members of clergy as we really t as we take this critical step forward to bring more justice to tens of thousands of New Yorkers. Last spring, we passed our landmark legislation, the Criminal Justice Reform Act, or the CJRA, which diverted hundreds of thousands of low-level, nonviolent summons offenses to the civil system. These laws took effect this past June, and already we have had a remarkable effect on New Yorkers. In just one week after the law was passed, only a few hundred open container criminal summons were issued compared to the thousands issued the same week last year. The years of over-policing and the issuing of criminal summons to primarily black and brown communities resulted in almost 1.6 million summons warrants in the city. Warrants that put individuals at risk for detention and as, uh, the implications on housing and jobs as well. The CJRA will greatly reduce warrants going forward, but we still needed to address the million plus warrants on the books. That is why almost two years ago today, I first called on the district attorneys in the five boroughs to clear old, low-level, nonviolent summons warrants. Warrants that have no bearing on an individual's potential for criminal activity or threat to public safety, 
but that still require that an individual be locked up for up to 24 hours just for the case, in most cases, to eventually be dismissed. Warrants that many New Yorkers don't even realize exist for things like being in the park after dark, littering, or drinking outside. Warrants that for too long have put hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers at risk for incarceration if they are stopped by the police, but today, no more. The warrants that were dismissed today are for individuals who had no contact, absolutely no contact, with the criminal justice system for over a decade, yet they are unknowingly at risk of arrest for cases that are impossible to prosecute. I am honored to be standing here with Acting Brooklyn DA Gonzalez and my colleagues in government to see this day come to fruition to deliver criminal justice reform for hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers. Working with the Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, and Queens DAs today, we're going to clear over 640,000 low-level summons warrants that are 10 years or older. So we are a city that believes in justice, that has been a mission of mine in my leadership and the council, uh, not in a supporting, we're not here to support a broken summons system. So today we're doing just that, we're providing justice. And so this is a massive undertaking and I'm thrilled that we were able to make and, and take this tremendous step forward. Good morning to the district attorney and to the speaker of the city council and to the clergy and to all of who have assembled today. 143,532 people and 640,000 individuals citywide will no longer have the shadow of old outstanding arrest warrants following them around. They will no longer have to look over their shoulder and worry if the warrant squad is behind them or worry about that knock on the door or, I, or as I have seen individuals who have been stopped for relatively minor offenses, such as not having their driver's license, who are hauled away to jail because they failed to pay a fine for littering. It's a historic day, and I want to thank Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez, as well as the District Attorneys of Manhattan, Queens, and the Bronx for their visionary leadership around this issue. I have advocated for a very long time for criminal justice reform throughout my career, and today is an opportunity for real change. Open warrants inadvertently penalize a person for years and even decades. And when someone mi misses a court date, a bench warrant is issued for his or her arrest, and any interaction with a police officer involving an ID check results in the person being handcuffed and carted off to the nearest precinct. And communities of color have been disproportionately impacted by outstanding warrants for infractions that are largely low-level violations. And most of these warrants cover <coughs> a very dark period in our history, and that is the aggressive, broken window enforcement period. And the city's draconian policy has also impacted officers who have no discretion when it comes to bench warrants. They must arrest individuals with warrants and put them through the system. And I've seen grandmothers and grandfathers and individuals put in the system who have never had any contact with the criminal justice system, law-abiding individuals who respect the law, but unfortunately, they were subject to a really draconian policy. How we handle and process low-level offenses has not been productive or cost-effective for our city, for taxpayers, our community, the criminal justice system, or even our police. But the good news is that we've already begun to change, and today is a major step towards making our justice system more fair and equitable for everyone. Today, 700,000 old warrants will be dismissed throughout the city. That's 700,000 fewer cases clogging up our courts and 700,000 opportunities for a fresh start. I keep in my thoughts and my prayers my neighbor and my friend, the late Ken Thompson, who first piloted amnesty for those with old bench warrants. And District Attorney Eric Gonzalez has continued his work and his legacy and has gone even further. And I thank him for his commitment to justice today. And thanks to his efforts, today's new beginning for thousands of Brooklyn residents will be followed by even brighter days in the future. I must note that I have never sat at a district attorney's table. Whenever I have entered this building, I've always sat at the defense table. But today, there's only one table 
That's the table of justice. I thank the district attorney. I am Reverend Sean Lee, pastor of Mount Lebanon Baptist Church here in Brooklyn. And I'm speaking today on behalf of the clergy. For some time now, local churches and the Brooklyn DA have partnered together uh, to help those people who are dealing with these summons to clear their name and to give them another chance. The foundation of our faith speaks of redemption and a new beginning. So we are grateful and happy to always partner with the Brooklyn DA whenever we are lifting the unnecessary burdens of our people who make up this great city. Back in December of 2015, uh, Begin Again was at Mount Lebanon, and I realized how powerful and impactful this program was. I'm a product of Brooklyn, grew up in Brevoy Projects, and as we were there in the church and people were getting their summons vacated, someone called out my name, Sean. I looked up, and it was a man named Pookie, who knew me growing up. And it's hard to grow up in Brooklyn and not know someone Amen. named Pookie. <laughs> Pookie was there who knew me since I was born. And he was telling me how grateful he was for this program and how now he can go out and get a new start. And at that moment, I realized that these aren't just numbers or statistics. These are real life people who are getting a new chance. So we want to thank the Brooklyn DA and we look forward to partnering in the future um, reform, reforming our criminal justice system and helping making a Brooklyn for everybody. Thank you. And we'll take a few questions, but before we do, I also want to acknowledge and recognize uh, supervising criminal court justice uh, Michael Yavinsky um, for allowing us to be here today and to uh, Judge Ariaga who presided on today's proceedings. Uh, uh, they were also partners in Begin Again. Um, in particular, Judge Yavinsky had made sure that he attended all of our Begin Again events. So I thank him for his leadership on behalf of the court system on uh, supporting us as we move towards making our criminal justice system more fair.